Hi everyone and welcome back. So in the last video we have seen the nice and clean demo. We are able to do the authentications and uh, simple user sign up and user sign in. Now what we are going to do is we are going to do some enhancement in this application. Okay, we already know some there are some to do's and we are going to introduce the JWT strategy so that once user is sign in, user get the access token or maybe a refresh token and with the help of access token, user should start accessing the protected API routes. So what I'm doing is let's say we'll create uh, one more route or before that uh, let's fix this uh, because here we need to return the data sign data and it is going to return as the whole payload which contains the user id email password and user id email role permissions and the token here uh, we we just put a command there comments there but we didn't actually wrote this update api this is update user api so update user api is dependent on auth service to validate the old old password which has been sent by in the update api is correct or not with the email so what we are going to do first we will verify that with the help of auth service that this current email and this old password really exist so we can just use the authentication service auth service and there is a default method already there this dot validate user by password so what it takes is it should take uh, two arguments i guess email and the email and the old password and uh, this is the update user api let's say you are passing the old password and new password to reset the new password to reset the password in that case you are passing the old password and the new password so the old password we need to check if the old password with the combination of email is valid or not if uh, that is valid <coughs> that means we should allow uh, this api to update the user with the, the new password so here it should take i think object as an input validate user password that is taking uh, user DTO and that contains uh, I think email and password so we have both the parameters we can pass that parameter through this uh, user controller update API so there is an error obviously this is an error because it is expecting one argument and we are passing two but uh, what we can do is we can simply let's see what this particular method is returning this method should just return the result which contains uh, the user current user and the token and then we can just say return result and what this token contains uh, token also contains i think a uh, lot of properties inside it and if nothing then it will return null and this is taking uh, object as an input so what we need to do is we need to pass an object instead of uh, just passing the email and the password <clears throat> so let's see what we are doing here we are returning null from auth service so this needs to be an object so validate user by email password this is taking payload user sign in DTO and this user sign in DTO is nothing but the email and the password <coughs> so we can just pass the email comma password I think okay there is a typo it should be password not okay so we are passing both of these parameters email and the password if we are passing correctly this typescript error will go away okay this is user service and we'll fix this by changing it to the password so here we are validating then we will just check okay if this is returning a token or some kind of object that means uh, if it is not null that means that user exists with this email and the old password and we should allow uh, user to update its password i mean we should allow user to reset the password so what we will do is we will just set fields to update the fields which we are going to update fields to update dot password equal to the the new password fields to update dot uh, password update dot new password so it should be fields 
okay so this is fields dot what is the payload payload is fields and here we are creating at line number 41 we are creating fields to update as a new map object so it should be fields to update dot password now the rest all logic is same it's just to validate okay should we allow user to reset the password or not so it's like just uh, some to do we are able to complete now another thing is when you are doing a user sign up right user sign up we were not checking if user already exists with the email before even doing that we can just check if the user this dot user report dot find find one where user equal to where email equal to this lower case of that email then if user founds then we should not allow you to create a new user with the same email we can just send a conflict exception which is 409 that means resource with the some attributes already exist you need to change the attributes so find one by email we can use the user service already method if user is there if user is not null there is already a user object so we can just change it to the existing user if existing user is there then throw new conflict exception okay these are like basic enhancement which you can do through to your api user already with the this email already exists now coming to the important part is the refresh token or how we can write a protected apis now you have that access token in your hand so what you will do is you will use that access token to access the protected apis so for that we are going to use jwt strategy and auth guards jwt strategy is nothing but whenever you are sending a request with authorization it will try to decode the token it will check the expiry and it will give you the payload uh, in the uh, in payload in your jwt strategy and it will validate okay this user is active and exist then you can attach it this jwt strategy will attach the user to the request object I mean regarding the permissions I already talked about this we will have permissions and then based on the permissions we can write a auth card okay saying that okay this API routes can be accessed by the system admin or root user because you cannot fetch all the list of users of all the restaurant so there will be a system root user or system admin there will be restaurant admin and restaurant user and there will be end user restaurant admin should be able to access the data of his restaurant only not any other restaurant so this is how the user will, will bootstrap with the permissions with the roles and then we can create the role guard in the nest js for authorization that means you can access this particular route you can you cannot access another route all those kind of thing all those kind of thing so here let's say we are going to write another endpoint and that endpoint will do is a refresh token and what with the help of this endpoint we will try to showcase how we can create a rest api in nest js which is protected by authorization bearer token if the token is invalid then we will not allow or how this refresh token actually works you will do a user will do a login you will get a two tokens access token and refresh token access token will have expiry of one minute or maybe 15 minute access token refresh token will be a seven days a week once your access token expire after 15 minute your front end start will start receiving 401 when the front end token expire you can actually use the refresh token send the refresh token in the request and you will get the new access token in the response and you will start sending the that new access token in the authorization header and everything starts working fine you don't need to forcefully log out the user to get the new token so that is the concept of how we can get the how we can manage the access token and refresh token refresh to token you have to store in your database so if it is in the database then when the refresh token api you are hitting i will check this refresh token is in the database user is active okay this is the authorized user if this user has the refresh token that means he wants to get the new access token let's give him and get rid of that so that is just a, that is a simple flow of how the refresh token and the access token works I mean in a lot of application it, it is being used otherwise what you will do is when you start getting 401 you will forcefully log out the user and you will say, present a login screen their user has to log in again but that's not really idle okay if the session is active 
even after token expiry you should be able to refresh the token with the help of refresh token mechanism here this is the another api i am writing this api will be protected by authorization header i mean uh, without passing the authorization correct access correct access token you cannot really access this api so we are going to use uh, jwt strategy and auth guard for that so it's just a simple okay what is the api response api okay response because it's a simple http get and uh, the objective of this is to return the currently logged in user it's like a refresh token and also it will generate it will try to regenerate the token we will also write the end-to-end -end implementation of refresh token and access token maybe in the next video where when you do the login we will return you the access token and refresh token both in the response here we are just checking okay this endpoint is protected and it will return you the the new token before even writing the service method we have to look into jwt strategies so we already have some strategies created here we are we are going to use passcode jwt and that jwt strategy what it will do is it will first check okay you have authorization bearer token yes decode it check the expiry and give you the payload and based on the payload you will do a user service call this dot user service dot find by email by passing the email if the user exists we are good otherwise you are not not authorized to access this particular route okay so let's see what we are doing inside this refresh token refresh token is not going to take any argument here we will just write a, a strategy so there are uh, multiple strategies we can write uh, currently we are going to write a strategy for just uh, access token here we can just use a request uh, i mean you can also access context request response because in the response i just wanted to return the request dot user so you can use uh, at the rate request and then uh, what you can do is you can just return the request dot user in the the response okay now there is a strategies so here we can create a jwt dot strategy dot ts jwt dot strategy dot ts and this strategy we are going to create a simple class this is also an injectable class so this injectable class will do it this is injectable class export class um jwt strategy that should extend i guess uh, passport local strategy passport local strategy and you will pass uh, a strategy here and inside this strategy i mean this is a fixed set of code how we write the passport strategy there will be a validate method and inside a constructor you will just pass the mechanism to extract the payload from the access token so passport jwt is not there we will import it and we should be good after that now inside a constructor we are going to inject a couple of things like a user service we are going to use to validate that the whatever the user id is in the token is really active user have all the permissions and all so we are going to inject the auth service and we are going to inject the config service because with the help of config service we will provide this jwt strategy the access token secret because we need that secret again to decode the token and get the payload okay so let's write it here we are going to add all these properties we are doing dependency injection and then with the help of dependency injection here we are injecting auth service and config service and we will just call because we are extending the passport strategy we will just call super and jwt from request this is this is the mechanism using which we will extract the token from the header and here we will just pass the secret or the key is config service dot get and we will just pass the auth dot secret using this secret first of all we need to uh, there, there is already a method extract jwt uh, from authorization bearer token 
So if you are passing the authorization header with bearer space access token, we will just use this method. I mean, it, it will internally use this method to get the access token value. So this is how we will pass the token bearer and this is your access token. Okay, this is a simple constructor and now we will write validate method because automatically it will pass the decode payload if the token is valid. Decode payload in the validate object validate method and here we can use this user service auth service to check if this user exists there or not. So it is using extract jwt it will extract the token from the authorization header and then we will write validate method. This validate method will have an input the, the payload I mean whatever you decode the JWT token that payload will be passed to the validate. So this will contain a user ID, email and uh, the, the properties which we put in the JWT token to create a token while doing a JWT.sign. So that payload is decoded and here we already have a user ID or email. So we can validate if this user uh, really exists or uh, is still active. So validate user by here we will just pass the method. I think validate user by or find user by ID or validate JWT payload. Uh, that is also good. Here we are passing the whole payload. If it is returning uh, the result, that means the user exists. Otherwise, we can just return through a new unauthorized exception. That is, we can just send uh, unauthorized exception or forbidden. So unauthorized exception is still fine. Otherwise, you can send forbidden. Forbidden 403 means you are not allowed to access this particular resource. You need to be first authenticated. So for that, you just send unauthorized. 403 is a forbidden. You will send it when you are authenticated, but you are not allowed to access a particular uh, resource based on your role. So we will just send uh, unauthorized exception. And here we are going to define uh, this particular method uh, public async validate uh, token payload and in this token payload we are already getting the user object so here uh, we can call the service method inside auth service that uh, this dot uh, user service await this dot user service dot find by email or find by email and we'll just pass the email payload dot email if the email exists then we are good we will just uh, return the user we will just return the user or because I think this method itself is returning the user. So we don't need to check if user is a null or not. We can just directly return it uh, from this here. So now what actually this is doing, this is returning the user and this uh, JWT strategy will put that user on the request object request dot user will give you that information. Now inside out service. Uh, we are returning this and JWT strategy is calling this. This is also an injectable class. So JWT strategy, we need to add that in the auth module. The auth module will have a providers. There we need to return it. There we need to put uh, inside the providers and exports. So this is our auth module. We will put the this with auth service. And then this JWT strategy will be uh, triggered to all the the protected routes so here we will what we will do is we will create uh, the auth guards so it is just calling this validate jwt payload and returning user now what we will do is inside auth controller uh, whatever because once if you are hitting a particular route which is uh, protected then this jwt strategy will put the user object inside request and you will just print request dot user and here we will write a logic to create a new token based on that so const new token equal to this dot auth service await this dot auth service uh, service i think this dot service dot here we can write a method which will just generate a new token for us so here we will define a method uh, let's say create token Create token method also we can uh, call. It's a it's a it was private method. Now it is public, so we'll just pass the create token. And create token method is taking user entity, so we can just pass request dot user. It will just generate a new token with the new expiry, and we'll just return the user info, uh, which is just a user and the new token. I think new token itself is having everything inside it, so we can just return the new token also. And this is request dot user. 
we have we can restructure the user from the request and then we'll just pass it okay so now uh, what we are going to do we are just going to play with this and we have to protect this api also and somehow in the swagger also we need to expose we need to provide a way so that we can pass the authorization header okay so in swagger docs we need to do some magic there so that we can start doing it here we are going to create a auth guard jwt auth dot guard dot ts and what this auth guard will do is this auth guard will check before even going to the route if request dot user is available that means you are authorized by jwt strategy you uh, that token is valid and the user is uh, the the active user okay so here this i just copied the sample jwt auth guard extend auth guard and here unauthorized exception and here we are going to get the first of all we are going to get the context and then create a copy of get the instance of request object and we will check if request dot user is there that means we are good user is already authenticated has a valid token and that has been validated by jwt strategy from execution context i okay so we will just get the request object switch to http here we'll get the request object and then we'll just check if request.user is there then uh, we are good otherwise uh, we are not so it is going to return the request and then there is a handle request method so inside a handle request method we should have the user object available if user is object is not there then at line then line 14 we are sending unauthorized otherwise we are returning the user so this auth guard will be triggered so we can use use guard annotation we will just use use guard annotation and use guard we can pass this uh, jwt auth guard at the controller level so it is just returning get request is returning the request and then handle request is just checking that you do you have a user object inside a request if yes we are good otherwise we are not we will just send you an authorized exception so use guard and here we'll pass jwt auth guard we just import it and now this particular route is protected so only a user coming with a authorization bearer token can access this so we will see more about this when we actually play with this particular api refresh api so let's say what we are going to do is here we are returning we can just return a simple new token because new token will contain everything it contains the the payload user payload and the access token inside it okay so what we need to do is we just play with this particular example and we will just start the server I, I server is already started and it is already exposed on swagger now the last thing is we need to expose things from the swagger right so i have added this add bearer oath what it will do is it will add the authorization option in the swagger documents so once you get the access token you can pass it and then this uh, authorization token will be passed to each and every controller at the controller level also you can do it so here you can see i'm doing a simple login i got the access token that access token i can just copy and paste it here so this authorization will be enabled so currently if i try to access it i will get 401 unauthorized uh, i mean your token is invalid then i will use authorization so now if i just hit this then you can see in the authorization bearer i'm sending this token and i got the new access token so same thing we can just use it with the refresh actual refresh token also where you are passing the refresh token and getting access token and refresh token back so that we can do in the real world example i mean uh, in the next video maybe i will just do it offline and then i will just showcase the demo